So this is one of the items that really started me on the path to collecting fan-made items. It was in Mexico City in 2004 at a Star Wars convention, and this won first prize in the pinata category. And I just, I thought it was incredibly creative because pinatas I had seen were just sort of tacky. I waited till the gentleman who made it came back to claim his pinata, and I said, oh my God, I've never seen anything like this. Would you be willing to sell it to me? And he said, oh, I don't know how much I charge you. And I thought, oh, here comes the hammer. And he said, it only cost me $4 in supplies. And I said, yes, but your artistry, your skill, I'll give you $100. And his wife went, don't wanna take it. So uh, uh -huh. you can actually, uh, don't tell anybody this, I don't want this to get out, but you can actually lift the saddle, see the paper mache, and put the candy and the toys in there. But people have attempted to get close to it with lightsabers and do, you know, but you know, that, that doesn't happen. I talked about the original Ralph McQuarrie design for Starkiller on the banner I have. This is a sandblasted and carved version of that by Steve Gawley, one of the first hires at the model shop and someone who worked on all six of the Star Wars movies. And he it looks brand new, but he actually made it November of 1977. And this is the famous original logo that Ralph McQuarrie loved so much and his version of Starkiller. So Steve airbrushed this and then he had it all these years, packed it away obviously because it looks brand new. And a year ago, um, all of the model makers got together because one of their former colleagues had had a stroke and had a tremendous hospital bills and they had a big auction and gala and uh, it was also online and I was determined to get that because I thought this was the most beautiful piece that I had ever seen, hand carved by somebody that I had known for decades and it was a great uh, interview for my first Star Wars book ever. So um, this, is, this is really, it's a new piece and an old piece at the same time. Fans, you never know what people are gonna mash up. So we have Guernica, Pablo Picasso's famous anti-war painting, and we have a fan in Spain who has used that as the basis for Guern Echo, which is the invasion of the rebel base on Hoth, Echo Base, uh, by the Empire. So it's an anti-war Star Wars painting from a certain point of view. You like Salacious Crumb? You don't need to be a great artist or have um, just all kinds of special materials to make things. So this is from Mexico by Pablo Carrizales, and it is crunched up newspaper and packing tape. And I think probably a little bit of fuzz from a vacuum cleaner. I'm not quite sure what that is, but yeah. So uh, great stuff. And on the same shelf, we have a tongue depressor R2D2 sculpture, also from Mexico by Javier Vasquez. And the, the legs have wheels and the third leg goes up and down. And I mean, it's this kind of stuff that, that makes me so admire the passion for fans that fans have for Star Wars and how they translate that into these wonderful objects. Tilly the Tauntaun is a, uh, is a rocker. And a friend of mine named Woodchuck in Florida made this, has made several of them. But he's only, I said, Chuck, I really want one that I can ride. This is a little too small for me. So I also now have the one of a kind, Bella the Bantha. Actually, it's a little big for me. I, I get a little sore when I ride it. This a wonderful tile mosaic here. We got an email from a, a guy named Mike Payne who lays tiles in kitchens and bathrooms. And um, he said, I've done this piece. I would like to donate it to Rancho Obi-Wan. Well, Mike is also lead guitarist for a heavy metal band in Southern California. He was here the other day. I love when artists come in here and they see their items on the shelves and they just go crazy. So it's, uh, it's been a really a joy to have these out at the uh, celebration. Now, you want to play holographic chess? So we did a little display for J.J. Abrams before he started out on uh, uh, episode uh, seven. And we brought a bunch of pieces to Skywalker Ranch. And uh, this was one of the pieces we brought. So I think that's why he decided to bring out the Falcon and make a new uh, chess table. Not really, but. And then there's a sculptor named Ian Martin who's starting a full set. One thing I've always wanted and have asked licensees for is a scaled set of the Jarek hollow chess pieces. And we're finally gonna get a full set. These are the first two of eight that will be done. So 
you know, I'm excited about these things. This is a charity project uh, for the Mandalorian Mercs who raise money for all kinds of underprivileged kids and, and everything else. And based on the Boba Fett armor, and artists do, uh, this is the Crate Dragon, this is uh, Stencil Wars, just again using parts of Star Wars to do iconic pieces. This magnificent painting is the world's largest Star Wars oil painting done by an artist in San Francisco, Robert Xavier Burden. I do not own this. Uh, it's a bit out of my budget. It's a, it's a bit large, but it would be a beautiful addition. Um, the Chicago Tribune just had a story about it and was suggesting that George Lucas buy it and put it in the new museum that he's going to be building in Chicago. So it's called 20th Century Space Opera and it's Robert's toys uh, that he played with and he, he refound a box of, his to of the toys in his parents' house and he just didn't get the same thrill that he got when he was a kid. He remembered being so excited about it. So he wanted to do a painting that would bring back that awe and inspiration that he got when he first saw these plastic toys at a very young age. And so we've got almost all of the action figures from the trilogy, ships, and, uh, and, and we've got uh, Easter eggs in here. So uh, Yul Brenner from the M Magnificent Seven, of course, based on a Kurosawa movie, and George was influenced by Kurosawa. This uh, stencil graffiti art has attracted a lot of attention, so it's called Land Obama, and uh, so it's the president and Lando Calrissian, and a famous line from Empire, the steel is getting worse all the time, and that certainly uh, goes for uh, Barack Obama too. So uh, a lot of uh, top executives here were through the booth early Thursday morning uh, who know the president uh, were really tickled by that one. And then we have one of the first uh, uh, iconic uh, use of iconic objects for artists, the Vader Project. More than 100 Vader helmets were sent around the world. This one is Join the Happy Side by a Japanese artist, Yoko Do Hobachi. Even skateboard decks can be used uh, by, uh, by artists. So these were done by tattoo artists for the 30th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back. A black velvet deck and Adam Hayes, one of the best tattoo artists in the United States. And of course over here we have George walking his ad ad. So, uh, you know, th this again was done for charity um, and we have political commentary, Che Baca and Che Trooper. Uh, it's just amazing stuff. You know, a friend of mine from Peru came and said, ah, you didn't know that George stole the idea for the characters of Star Wars from the ancient Inca. I said, what? And he said, yes, we've just dug up in Peru all of these huacas, the ceremonial pots, and look, they're all in the shape of Star Wars characters. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru. Those are the action, well, those are actually the in-action figures uh, of, of that wonderful couple uh, who uh, didn't quite make it through Star Wars. Uh, people have fun with this. Great joy and fun and a great outlet to creativity. And that's just a few of the treasures. I think it's...